Hello everyone and welcome to Extreme Graphics Tech. My name is Angelo and a couple of weeks ago I brought to you my first test with FSR 3.1 but on that occasion I only tested the reconstruction part of it and we saw that there are many improvements in the technology and in the reconstruction even if it's still far from perfect and still from my point of view DLSS and XSS are far superior well, any improvement is always welcome. However, on that video, I didn't mention two things. Uh, one of them because at the time I didn't know, and the second one because I was waiting to make a second video about it, which is this one. But the first thing I didn't mention is that now FSR is its own DLL, which means that now if there is a FSR 3.2 or 3.3 or whatever, you will be able to just replace the DLL and get the new improvement and advantages of the latest version, just as it happens in NVIDIA DLSS. Before, the game had to, what the, the, the FSR was integrated directly into the game and you could not update it unless the developer updated the game. So that's a good news. Unfortunately, this is only going to happen for FSR 3.1 and onwards. So any game that hasn't been updated to 3.1, you won't be able to take advantage of replacing the DLL. And this is the problem because if the uh, the game is already abandoned and the developer is not going to update it, you won't be getting the advantages of the new algorithm that is FSR 3.1. At least that's what we hope in the sense that the games that have been released i hope this is what is going to happen from now on but all of them are from the same developer and the same company which is nixus with all the playstation games so i hope that other games will do exactly the same because this is the way it's going to be working so far we believe so okay the second thing i didn't mention and that's what this video is about is about that fsr has decoupled FSR frame generation from the reconstruction technique. As you know, many, many months ago, I tested frame generation from AMD. And as I said at the time, I believe it's, a, it's quite good. Even though DLSS frame generation is better, I don't think the difference is that big compared to DLSS reconstruction. So I think the uh, uh, FSR frame generation is a very, very good. Even if the LSS is slightly better, there is not such a huge difference as is in the reconstruction part of it. So the good thing now is that before, if you wanted to use uh, FSR frame generation, you had to use FSR reconstruction. And the problem is that FSR reconstruction has a lot of shimmering and issues that are still even in 3.1 not solved. It is better but it's still not solved and XCSS and DLS are much better. So many of the problems that we saw in FSR frame generation were not because of frame generation, but it was because FSR reconstruction. So if you start with a crappy frame, you are going to get a crappy result. But now that has changed. And now at least we hope so, because that's how these games are presented with FSR 3.1 the options are decoupled, meaning that you can use DLSS, XCSS, or any other option, and then still use FSR frame generation. And this is a great news, and I have to give my applause to AMD, because this way many other users, even no AMD users, are going to um, take advantage of this situation. Because now you can play D use DLSS on, on your RTX 2000 or 3000 series, because as you know, Nvidia, uh, has decided that the LSS uh, frame generation is only available on Series 4000, which I, which what AMD has done, you know, it has shown that whatever bullshit AMD has told us, they just decided to block it behind, uh, you know, a paywall, which is getting a new GPU. Because I'm sure if you can do it purely on software, that there is ways that Nvidia could have done this in RTX 2000 and 3000 series. But anyway, having said that, now plus to AMD, because now you can have the best of both worlds, meaning that you can use your RTX 2000 or 3000 for DLSS reconstruction, which we know is far superior, or your Intel 750 with XCSS, and then add, add on top FSR frame generation, which is going to be a game changer in many cases, as I'm going to show in these three games that I tested that has this option available. 
And starting with Ghost of Tsushima, well, you can see this is a game that is very well optimized and being from, uh, originally from PlayStation 4, it makes it easy for the RTX 2060 Super to move the game at 1440p using the LSS balance and the high preset. Um, so I played like for around 30 minutes and the game was mostly above 60 FPS. I think I only saw a couple of instances where maybe it went under 60, but normally you will get quite good uh, performance out of it. And maybe you can go even to very high preset and then it will go down under 60 because um, the presets make a, quite a, a, a big difference in terms of performance here. So, but then I activated frame generation on, and as you can see, we jump from 60 to around 90 FPS, which is 30 FPS difference. And even though you are seeing this video only recorded at 60 FPS, and so I don't know which frames are being shown, there could be a lot of uh, bad frame or fake frames on real ones, you still see a very smooth experience uh, without any issues or error whatsoever on the screen. So I think this is a very good case for when you want to have that extra performance. You, of course, can lower uh, the DLSS balance or maybe the preset to have even more frames or get a more a quality like very high and probably still have above 60 FPS, very smooth ones. Another game that I tested is Horizon Forbidden West, but in this case, you can see we start around 40 something, 40 high, um, using the same preset as Ghost of Tsushima. Um, we, could we could have gone to medium preset to have better performance, but the whole point of this is to show how we can get better quality game by just sticking up on high quality and then activating frame generation. As you can see here, and as you know, the RTX 2060 Super doesn't support the LSS3 frame generation, so we can use that, but now we're using the LSS balance, which gives a very good image quality, which is one of the advantages of the RTX series of cars. But then, you know, we're not playing above 60 FPS most of the time, but we activate frame generation and then we go above 70 FPS, which is a very good result and the game feels and play very smooth. There is, um, at least on these sort of games, you don't really get like a laggy feel or anything like that because you don't need that precision and it doesn't feel like that. Maybe on a, you know, eSports game, you are not going to be using frame generation. But here, the good thing is that we are most of the time, because I can assure that there is not a point where maybe you can get a little bit under 60, but the point is that you're having a much better performance by combining the LSS with frame generation. And this is more evident where we are trying to use a game that has a ray tracing with an old GPU like the RTX 2060, because in this case then you know by activating uh, some uh, ray tracing effect you can see here that I have to go to the medium preset okay to in order to be able to get sort of decent performance and even then we are not getting to 60 so because of the uh, whole RT reflections and shadows and there were parts where I went even under 40 FPS like very briefly but as you can see right now we are around 40 something FPS so that's not bad, you can play, but of course, if you want to get that 60 FPS while having ray tracing activated, well, all you have to do is activate frame generation, and there you go, you have around 70 FPS now. So this means that you can have a better quality, um, just st still maintain. I am not recommending to start from 30 FPS, but you know, even here we went under, f we went to around 59 FPS, imagine without frame generation. So this means that still, you you're having a very nice experience and the combination of DLSS plus frame generation really gives some more life into these old GPUs, especially when ray tracing is enabled, in order for you to enjoy and have more time with them without having to update. Starting from a not so low frame rate, of course, but you can go from 45 on onwards, and I think it's a good point. You're going to get above 60, even 70 FPS, depending on the game, and even more depending on how you start, at least on an RTX 2060 Super, of course. Uh, how much frames you gain will depend on your GPU and how you know, the load is in. The thing is that now you can have this technology, improve your graphics, have better graphics, get to that middle point, activate frame generation, and then have a 60 FPS or more experience. Now we can play Ratchet and Clan, no problems whatsoever with ray tracing on, and it looks really good. And the, I couldn't really notice any big issue or uh, uh, any other problem. So I think in that sense, it works quite good. And you can have the two uh, best solutions that I would say is DLSS with frame generation from FSR. So 
yeah as you can see i think this is great news uh, i think you know your gpus are going to last longer especially now the many heavy hitter games triple a games are coming out in the uh, you know starting now i think finally we're seeing the next generation of games coming you know like more steady and this is going to allow you to you know put your rtx 2060 2060 super and so on and make them last longer because now you can have that smooth dlss reconstruction activate uh, ray tracing and still get a, a 60 or above experience you are not I, I wasn't getting like double the frame rate but i don't know if this is a limitation of, of the 2060 super uh, that was too loaded or um you need a faster gpu or it's just amd frame generation not working that great with nvidia i'm not quite sure however we were getting like from 40 to 65 70 so i will say you get like 50 to 60 percent there so this is still quite good it's quite a game okay and of course you need the monitor to move it and to appreciate it but i think it's quite a good news so what do you think let me know do you think this is a good thing or not do you don't like do you don't like frame generation anyway i think you know for people with low-end gpu which nowadays we can even say the rtx 2070 is probably one the rtx 3060 the wow well, i wouldn't put the rtx 4060 considering you can use the lss frame generation on that but you know for the other gpus and all the amd gpus that you could already use at least you can now can get dlss and frame generation at the same time so I hope you like this video, as always, see you on the next one.